there are quite a few techniques that can be applied to panel data or other cluster data to estimate the within effect. When you choose which techniques to apply or which techniques to learn, you need to understand the big picture and that's the point of this video. Instead of learning all these techniques as, as separate things that you just have to uh, memorize and understand their assumptions, it's useful to understand how these techniques compare and I think that it's useful to consider two different dimensions when evaluating these techniques. The first dimension is uh, what is the approach to contextual effects and the second is what is the approach to unobserved heterogeneity. The contextual effect can either be eliminated from the data as is done using the, all the fixed effects approaches. It can be assumed to not exist as is done using the GLS random effects or maximum likelihood random effects models or it can be modeled using the correlated random effects model. Another thing that you need to consider is what is your approach to unobserved heterogeneity? Do you want to eliminate it from the data? Do you want to model it, in, uh, include it in your model? Or do you perhaps want to take unobserved heterogeneity into account during the estimation? The most important of these, the more important of these two is the, the contextual effect or the random effects assumption. If you do uh, erroneously assume that there is no clustering, no unobserved effects, then the outcome will be that your standard errors will be incorrect. If you incorrectly assume that the contextual effect doesn't exist, then your estimates will be inconsistent. And the estimates are much more important than the standard errors, though they are important too. But the estimates are, are the, uh, things that, for example, go into a meta-analysis. We divide these techniques into three different categories. We have the fixed effects approaches which eliminate up the contextual effects. These approaches include the dummy variables for each, for each cluster. This is a very useful technique if the number of clusters is small. So if you have like 20 companies then using adding 19 dummies to indicate those companies leaving one as a reference company would be a useful strategy. If you have 300 companies then using dummies is not practical anymore. Then we have cluster mean centering all variables which is the same as GLS fixed effect estimation. You should not do that outside the GLS procedure because mean centering, cluster mean centering, the dependent variable will bias your standard errors and they need to be corrected. The other approach is that you model the unobserved heterogeneity. And uh, one way to do this is to cluster mean center the independent variables but not the dependent variable and then include a random effect for the unobserved heterogeneity in the model. This will uh, cluster mean centering the, the independent variables will eliminate all contextual effects from the data because it eliminates all between cluster differences in the explanatory variables. It will not eliminate those differences in the dependent variable, but the random effect in these models will take care of that. The third approach is that you don't model unobserved heterogeneity by adding random effects, but you adjust your estimates to take that into or your standard errors to take that into account. So unobserved heterogeneity does not influence the bias or consistency of the, the effect the estimates but it influences the standard errors. So uh, a useful strategy and very simple strategy to deal with the standard errors issue is to apply the cluster robot standard errors. So you can even use OLS regression and then just apply cluster robot standard errors and you're going to be fine with that analysis. The advantage of that approach is that simpler techniques are usually better because they are less likely to be misunderstood and less likely to misuse, be misused and also particularly in the case of OLS regression versus these other techniques the diagnostics for that model provided by most statistical software are much more developed than for other models because that is just such a common model. Then we have the random effects approaches which 
make the assumption that there are no contextual effects. So only within effects are allowed in the model all between cluster differences are just products of the within effect working in the clusters. And uh, again in these techniques you have two different categories. What do you do for unobserved heterogeneity? You can uh, model unobserved heterogeneity in which case you would go with ML maximum likelihood random effects model which is the normal multi-level model estimated for example by HLM or status mixed command and uh, then you have the uh, other techniques the, uh, the GLS random effects model so that's the, mo the traditional panel data model and you can also apply OLS or generalized estimating equations and cluster robust standard errors because unobserved heterogeneity does not influence the estimates it only influences or, or biases the standard errors. Then the third group of, of techniques is the correlated or CRE, correlated random effects or CRE approaches and in these techniques you model the contextual effect explicitly. So the idea is that all in all these techniques we include the cluster means as controls and those cluster means give us estimates of the contextual effect. Then we only need to decide on what to do with the unobserved heterogeneity. We can either model it by applying GLS random effects estimator or maximum likelihood estimation of a random interest model or we can just adjust the standard errors and use OLS regression or generalized estimating equations. Our paper provides data code or at least lists commands that you can apply to produce all these estimation results in STATA or in R. So, so which techniques should you actually apply? This lists the techniques but it doesn't really tell you uh, what you should think about first when you apply when you decide which analysis technique to estimate. So we provide this flowchart in our article and uh, the most important thing that you need to uh, decide first is which effects you are interested in. And Quite often it's the within effect but not always. Sometimes we are interested in the contextual effect and sometimes we are interested in the between effect or probably not very often and uh, even the population average effect could be of interest in sometimes. The within effect is useful because it tells you uh, what is the effect of an individual level variable on an individual level outcome. For example, uh, what can firms do to improve their profitability? What can people do to uh, improve their health? The contextual effect was what is the effect of others around you on your performance. For example, uh, how do the intelligence of other team members influence an individual team member's performance? That kind of thing. So that really comes from your research question. You need to think hard which effect you want to know and then you pick the right analysis technique. The, the first thing that you need to do know is whether you want to know, estimate the within effect only or the within effect and, and between effect or contextual effect. If you only estimate the within effect then uh, you must ask the question does the random effect assumption hold? If the random effect assumption holds then you must provide evidence in the form of the Hausmann test, Walt test, F test or likelihood ratio test and, and just demonstrate that you have uh, no reason to reject the random effects assumption. Even better if you can provide a theoretical justification for the random effects assumption that then that should be added. If that is the case then you can use a random effects model because it's the most efficient among these modeling techniques for estimating the within effect if the random effects assumption holds. If the random effects assumption doesn't hold then uh, you should apply either one of the fixed effects approaches or preferably one of the correlated random effects approaches because these correlated random effects approaches also provide you information about the contextual effect and that might be interesting for to, to you and perhaps some of the readers of your study. If you are interested on, on effects on multiple levels then you need to decide for each variable at the time what kind of effects you want to know and uh, 
If you only want to study within effects for a particular variable, then you must test the random effect assumption for that particular variable. If it doesn't hold, if it holds, then you provide evidence and you can uh, apply a random effect model. If there are contextual effects or between effects, then you must make a decision which one you want to study. The contextual effect is probably the more commonly of interest and uh, if you study contextual effect, then you add cluster means to the model. If you want to know the between effect, then you are uh, cluster means center the original variables and then add the cluster means to the model and you apply a CRE model. This can be done for one variable at a time. So it is possible to estimate only a within effect for some of the variables, contextual effect for some of the variables and between effect for some of the variables. So typically most commonly you estimate are the same set of effects for all variables, but it, you are not limited to doing that if there's a good reason to do so. So uh, this flowchart gives you like a rough idea on what kind of techniques you should consider based on your research question and our paper provides some details about these techniques as well as some examples on how they're applied to data.